So I'm in Westminster to interview another Member of Parliament. Now, Jess Phillips was only elected back in May, but she's already made a pretty explosive impact. Uh, she certainly is known for saying what she means and meaning what she said, and uh, if we're going to do it in her office. Those officers are quite pokey, so it's going to be a bit, a bit cosy as interviews go. But I think this one is going to be a corker. Can Labour win under Jamie Corbyn? No. At the moment, I would say we wouldn't win the general election. If the general election was called today, and, you know, a week is a long time in politics, so four years is an even longer time. But at the moment, I can't see that the result would be any different, if not, it would potentially be worse for the Labour Party if the general election was called today. Do you want to change leader? I would do anything that I felt was going to make the Labour Party win the next election because if I don't have that attitude all I'm doing is colluding with the Tories. If that's making Jeremy better I'll roll my sleeves up. If that's not going to happen and I've said that to him and to his staff to their faces the day that it becomes that you are hurting us more than you are helping us I will I won't knife you in the back I'll knife you in the front. Do you think of Birmingham where you the community you represent yeah what do you think of the main objections mm. people have or sticking points or whatever. The, where Labour is going wrong is that people still don't trust us on the economy and at the moment unfortunately they're starting to not trust us on security rightly or wrongly. Do you think it was things like National Anthem, Shoot to Kill, those sorts of things? Shoot to Kill I think was worse than National Anthem. I think quite a lot of people especially in the seat I represent probably just thought it's not it's not like massively patriotic or anything. I think that the Bowgate thing about how much he didn't oh, yeah. bow I think actually won him back kudos because everyone went he did yeah, bow. He's out, That's he's stupid, yeah. Um, but the shoot to kill thing was pernicious. Because people do, just wanted to hear if the terrorists would clash the calls, they, the police should just. I mean, just a, a, just a timing. I mean, yeah. there's a broader debate to be had about shoot to kill, no doubt about it. I mean, Birmingham is a city that has suffered terrible terrorism over the years. They wanted to hear just after Paris that basically, if a man walks down your street with a big gun and he's going to kill you and he's got a bomb strapped to him, that we will shoot him in the head immediately, yeah. ten times. It's about communication. I think maybe he needs to work on that. Do you think it's because he didn't expect to win, did he? Mm. So normally people have all that preparation. Oh yeah, stuff. absolutely. And he's just... He has he been didn't. here for 33 years. Could have spent some time thinking about what he might, you know, want his vision for the country to be beyond some of his principles. So yeah, I mean, it, my entire life he's had time to think about it. Um, but yeah, he didn't expect to win, so... You're frustrated with him, aren't you? I am very frustrated with him, exceptionally. It's all too easy to dismiss the idea of good communication and good message with the Blairite years of spin. It's okay to be a, want to be clear with the country about what you think is best for them. And it's okay for some of those people to have voted Tory in the past. And I think that we're just talking to ourselves and that frustrates me. And I would do whatever I could to make Jeremy Corbyn more electable, but I you know, I've got to give me something to work with, mate. <laughs> if you were to grab, if you're going to grab him by his lapels, I do I'm, frequently. Do you, I do you? I do. What? I'm not one of these people who sits and plots no. in the background. I frequently go up to either him or his staff um, and just be like, "What are you thinking? Why so is what? there no one in your office literally screaming?" Put the red book down. <laughs> what the red book? Yeah. Uh, have you been? <laughs> What, what have you berated him? Now, what have you said, come on, pull yourself together, do this or do that, um, what sort of stuff? I've berated uh, his, him and his office uh, about the, all the nonsense about deselection. I won't say berated, I mean, it would make me sound really aggressive. I go in and say, you've got to stamp this out now. You've got to stop the infighting that is caused by fear of M MPs thinking that, the, you know, that there's some sort of mob rule. That, you know, in a vacuum of leadership, a mob will rule yeah. and he's got to show some more leadership. I'm not saying I'm some drone who wants to be led somewhere. I want to follow something I can believe in and fight for it. I mean, the Red Book thing, I could berate them, I mean, all day, every day for the Red Book thing. It was just such an own goal. Also, I don't think that we are doing anywhere enough to campaign locally in all the constituencies we need to win and in the constituencies we already hold about other stuff, we're just talking about Trident and wars and, you know, that's not the stuff not people talk priorities, to me, yeah. yeah. People mm. don't talk to me about Trident. And unfortunately, Jeremy's backstory, whether it's Jeremy himself, sets that agenda and it's just 
like, okay, that, if you don't want that to be the agenda, I'm not even saying that you do, you probably don't, move it on. Don't have own goals, like, you know, sort of patriarchally giving Ken Livingston, I know it was the NEC, but as the leader, he should show some leadership to the NEC as well and say, do you know what? This woman is perfectly capable of doing this job. Why do we need Ken Livingston telling us what to do? What, what does it mean to be a feminist for you? It's very, very simple. It's not like fancy, like, academic books and stuff. It's very, I just want never, ever to have something happen to me that doesn't happen to a man or me to be stopped from doing something just because I'm a woman. It is just about basically not having to do things that men don't have to do or put up with things that men don't have to. It's, it's you know, I don't have all sort of fancy highfalutin economic and academic answers to it. I just am sick of being treated differently because I'm a woman and I'm sick of other people being treated differently. Literally murdered all the time just by the virtue of your gender. What politics, why? Why did you throw yourself into this? deranged world. Yeah, the, the joke answer is because, although there is an element of truth in it, is because I was going for the long game of getting on Strictly Come Dancing. Um, <laughs> if the, any producers are watching. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I really, this is it now, I want to do the rumba with Ali Ash. But really because, I mean, I was working in a women's refuge and I'd got sort of like, you know, laissez-faire about the Labour government, everything was going all right when we had a Labour government and then Working in the refuge under the Tories, I realised that I had to fight back, and so I thought, instead of banging my fists on that side of the table, I'd come and bang them on this side. There's this thing sometimes called imposter syndrome, where they think any moment sort of someone's going to tap them on the shoulder and say, Not "There's yet. been a terrible mistake. You don't belong here." And everyone else seems to know what they're doing, and this is their whole world. And you just think, "What? Do you get that?" I used to get it until I spent any time here or with uh, colleagues from across the house. I think people think people here are much more impressive. It's like anyone who has any theory about any sort of conspiracy gives us much more credit than we deserve. Yeah. Any MPs overrated. Yeah, totally overrated. You know, this the Illuminati and all the different things that we're meant to be corruptly getting up to. You're not to. a lizard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am a lizard. Yeah, yes. I just don't yes, use, I... I use it for good, not bad. <laughs> a good lizard Illuminati. Brilliant. That's a good Normally, you know, back people who become a newly elected MP, you know, they bed down all the rest of it. But you've, you've been on TV, you've done a thing with Jacob Rees-Mogg, a previous interviewer. Uh, um, do you do watch Fine it? Fine man. Um, he is a lovely <laughs> guy, we both loved him. You, you've been you've on TV on, 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 on this week, mm. um, you're vying for Strictly Come Dancing. You had a bit of an argument <laughs> with goal. Diane. What was that all about, the argument with Diane Abbott? The, I mean, I think it's been grossly misrepresented, the argument with Diane Abbott, as if I walked up to her in the corridor and hey, just started you. showing her. I was actually having a private conversation with Jeremy Corbyn during uh, when it actually happened. And I had stood up in the Parliamentary Labour Party, the first one after he had um, become the leader and, and complained that I felt isolated as a woman in the Labour Party. Not a single woman had won any of the selections, not a single woman had been given any of the perceivably top jobs. And what I was faced with was excuses rather than understanding. And I was cross, so I asked them to swap. I said, OK, if it's not a demotion, why don't you swap Andy Burnham with, you know, one of the other women? So I, I'd got annoyed that I already felt like I was just being patted on the head with the response I got rather than, OK, you're right, we need to take some action in the future, let's get it right next time. Even that would have been better. But So I went up to him at the end. I'd never met the man before. Mm. And I said, oh, I'm, I hope you don't think I'm being rude. This really bothers me and I want to see something done about it. And Jeremy leant over and said, oh, my mum was a feminist. I'm with you, I'm a feminist. And was being, as Jeremy always is, utterly lovely. And Diane just came at, literally interrupted a private conversation between me and Jeremy. I said, you're so sanctimonious. You're not the only feminist in the Labour Party. So, to which I turned around and told us to F off. Are you enjoying it? And are you ambitious? Would you like to be leader one day? I do enjoy it. I sometimes really don't enjoy it and there are weeks where I wish I could just stay in my constituency and stay at home with my family. Um, I enjoy it much less than I thought I would, is the truth. Some of it can be really hard, but it is particularly hard in the Labour Party at the moment. And so it's, it's sometimes a difficult atmosphere to work in. Am I ambitious? I am ambitious for the Labour Party and if I thought that me being the leader of the Labour Party would help more people like the Labour Party, then yeah, I would do that, absolutely. I think it's a lie when people say, oh no, I've got no aspirations at all. Why do people say it? It's like when people give that fake answer about what's your downside in an interview and they say, I just work really hard. 
<laughs> oh, right, that, so. Well, on that bombshell, you need to go. You need to go. But thank you, Jess. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Great. Blimey. Uh, talk about getting a grenade and loving it out into the political edit. I told you she says what she means and means what she says. It will uh, upset some. Others will, will, will be more appreciative. Uh, but whatever you think of her, I think she's a, a brilliant and amazing asset. Uh, and in addition to the political world, I think we should have more MPs who can speak in that way like a human being, arguably. Uh, but we've got loads of more interviews to come. And if you look up there, uh, we've got loads of other interviews, uh, a diverse range of people. Uh, so uh, keep watching them, keep sharing them, uh, leave your comments, uh, subscribe, and I will see you next time.